Hello my soccer universe, the last round before international break is always a little bit weird and there are usually some surprising results in there as well. If it comes on the back of a Champions League round then this is usually even worse and this is exactly what we got this week in Serie A. We got many up and down performances, in the end it's literally only Milan that lose of course, but whenever you go to Fiorentina you play out a crazy game, and a crazy game this was. I mean, three safe penalties and you know, this was not the only penalty that was missed this week. We also have to look to Lazio Castellanos having one saved in a really cool manner. I'll mention this in my review of the matches. But Overall, I have to say, Lazio is starting to impress me. Marco Barone is a very undervalued coach. The work that he's done at Verona last season was really great. That he has the chance now to do this as Lazio, I think that's pretty amazing, I gotta say. So, I'm curious whether Lazio will actually be further on the up and maybe even challenge for a Champions League spot. On the other side, Roma... <laughs> you know what I read last week? that after their loss to the Europa League, Juric is already under pressure and about to get sacked to be replaced by none other than Daniele De Rossi. I mean, go figure, this is just so crazy stuff. Get a coach to work and if you realize that Juric is not for you, and yes, Juric is a very prickly character. But many Italian coaches are, and many Italian owners of course are as well, even if they're not Italian, and the Friedkins definitely qualify as one of the more eccentric owners out there. We also had Juve finally conceding a goal, only a 1-1 draw at home. But overall I have to say this league looks really wide open at the moment. Yes, between Milan and Torino in 6 and 7 and Napoli are 5 points, but you know 5 points don't mean much. I think that we have to look into Napoli being a true challenger because they do not have European commitments. They can go week by week, contest tons of time for prepare and this is dangerous. Although Napoli were also not too convincing in the win over Como, because Como gave quite a good account of themselves. So, without further ado, let's just review the games of the past week and the last one before the international break, and then we'll come back with a few more thoughts on that round. Already on Friday evening, Napoli ensured that they will go top of the table into the international break. They took a very quick lead through McTominay. However, then Como really came out pressuring Napoli, got a deserved equalizer through Strefezza just before the half. However, then they give away a penalty that Lukaku converts. And then Napoli had the easy game and sealed the deal thanks to a David Neres goal also assisted by Lukaku, who is back on the scoring sheet. Verona get the third of the season. It's a comeback win since Orestanio gave Venezia already a second million lead. However, thanks to quickly equalized and then it's a Jordan own goal that seals the deal for Verona. Of the small teams, it is Udine who still keep up in the table. They get the win over Lecce thanks to a Zamura goal relatively late on in the game. Atalanta also finding form they beat Genoa 5-1. I think it doesn't look good for Genoa this season. It is Retegi, former Genoa player who scores a hat-trick against them. He also assists another goal by Edelson. It was Atalanta all the way. Early on, Torino gave Inter quite some trouble in that game and it was a very even affair. And I think despite the 3-2 loss to Inter, I think Torino will take a whole lot of positives from this game. However, the game took a turn when Maripane in the 20th minute was sent off with a straight red card and five minutes later, Turam heads in a Bastoni cross. He also doubles the lead in the 35th minute after an Acerbi assist. However, Zapata almost immediately he scores. Torino are well in the game. Turam completes his hat-trick in the 60th minute. Late on, Vlasic pulls one back. This game, last season, I think Inter would have romped Torino and shot them out of the stadium. This time around, Inter are not that gelling and yes they get the win. On the other side as I said Torino probably can take a whole lot of positives from that one. You went toe to toe with the champions despite being a manless. And what about those ugly jerseys that Torino were wearing? Well, after coming back against Leipzig, Juve. had only Cagliari at home. However, it ends with a 1-1 draw. Vlahovic gave Juventus the lead through a penalty. However, late on, Marini, the 88th minute, equalizes. A few minutes later, Constantin wanted to get a penalty, makes a dive, and so he is sent off. I really wonder why Juve had to play in these really garish yellow jerseys at home. I mean, at home you should play in black and white, but hey, they were punished for it by dropping points and while you were still the only unbeaten team in Serie A, they have four draws along the way. 
And for the first time, they have conceded a goal. I think Lazio are very much a sleeper team this season. Under coach Baroni, who did great work with Verona, they get another win. This time a 2-1 over Empoli, although they had to come from behind because Esposito really stunned them in the ninth minute. But then it was one-way traffic. Plenty of chances created for Lazio. It is Zaccagne who gets the equalizer right after the half. Tati Castellanos has a penalty, shoots it hard in the middle. It is saved by the legs of the goalie. I love that penalties down the middle are saved. And then it is Castellanos late on who sends Pedro for the 2-1 win. If they would have converted their chances, Lazio could have won even by a higher margin. In a regional derby, Bologna took on Parma at home and ends in the goalless draw despite Bologna having almost the entire second half a man more since Koulibaly was sent off. However, Parma kept it tight and it ends in a goalless draw. And unlike Lazio, Roma seem absolutely unsettled at this moment. They took a lead through Dovbik, the 61st minute at Monza. This is last place Monza and I know they are probably not a last place team. However, this team doesn't give up and Mota gets just a few minutes later an equalizer and it ends in an overall alright 1-1 draw. But I don't know what's really happening to Roma in this season. Juric already under pressure. Well, the annual trip to Florence is never a one for the faint of heart, especially if you're a Milan fan. This time Milan again lose after an absolute crazy game 2-1 and to be honest I have to say probably deservedly so because especially in the first half Fiorentina were a much better team but it was also an absolute crazy game where we had three penalties and all three were saved by the goalkeeper. Don't see that very often. The first penalty came at 22nd minute when Tiernales was to clear out from his penalty box. Dodo gets his foot in between and Theo just touches it. Yes, but a letter of the law is a penalty. This type of penalty should never be given as a penalty. This is not a dangerous foul play. And I've been saying this consistently. I hate these types of penalties. In any case, Moise Kahn steps up and Mike Mignon saves it. Yes, finally Magic Mike also magically saves a penalty again. This was a lifeline for Milan. They then created some timid chances, but it is Yassine Adli. Of course, the former Milan player who gives Fiorentina the lead with a nice run into the box. Optional defending also, but then a great shot, 35th minute. Fiorentina have an unfortunately deserved 1-0 lead. However, lifeline to Milan. There's a clear penalty foul and it is Teo Hernandez who steps up. And was wondering, yeah, Teo was taking some penalties, but isn't Christian Pulisic a penalty taker now? Be it as in May, Teo Hernandez takes his penalty and it is saved by the hair. So we had two penalties. Both saved by the goalkeeper. And it was not a great game for Theo. <laughs> Gives away one penalty. Misses another one. Second half. Milan try to get the equalizer. And now they're playing on the right side where the fans are. Because the other one is being reconstructed. I think Fiorentina games will be a little bit awful to watch in the next few years. While reconstruction is going on. But beat it as, as it may. Milan get another penalty. And this is more or less the same type of penalty that Fiorentina got. Again. In my opinion, this should not be a penalty. On the other side, I was actually happy that this penalty was given for consistency's sake. And then again, it's Christian Pulisic is on the field. Who steps up? Tammy Abraham. Chooses the other corner, but it's the same penalty that Theo took. And again, the hair saves. However, Theo then assists Pulisic. Great goal in the 60th minute. It's 1-1. And you think that Milan might get now the upper hand and push for the win. They have been getting into the game. And again, again caught on the counter. Ken assists Gudmundsson, who just yanks it into net. It was a really good goal and yeah there were some other chances for Fiorentina as well. I think overall as I said Fiorentina did deserve this win. It also gets Palardino out of his trouble although he got sent off with a red card and I also just saw the Hernandez got also sent off with a red card probably complaining to the referee. This squad is a little bit of a mess at the moment. Too many emotions going. Unfortunately the great run with three wins in a row is now over but maybe this is one of those wins that are healthy to actually make another challenge. Crazy round, wasn't it? And as I said in the opener, I think this is a really wide open league. Yes, Inter should be considered the favorites. I honestly think that Napoli should be considered co-favorites. And let's see whether the Motor Revolution can do something, whether Milan and the Fonseca can get something going. I think the potential is there. It's just you have to get it on the pitch, which they didn't do at Fiorentina 
on the weekend, which is a little bit damning at the moment. Milan only are projected to finish fourth. Top four finish is fine, but you know, it's not fine if Inter win another title. So I guess even Milan fans will be looking out for Napoli. There's also one story that I missed to mention that is related to the Inter and Milan Ultras where 19 were imprisoned because of racketeering. Seemingly they have had mafia style methods where they controlled the area around San Siro, of course, getting tickets off the clubs. All the businesses around San Siro, they had to play protection money, ugly stuff that puts the ultra culture again in disrepute and all the good things that they're doing of course is now seriously damaged by people like that. Looking at the next round on the 19th we have a very tasty fixture between Juve and Lazio. Milan have to face one of their bogey opponents in Udinese. Let's see if I will be watching the game because I think we have some commitments there. And then we have Roma against Inter. That's a game that sounds much better than it actually is at the moment because Inter have been going to Rome all the time and winning that one, but at least will be a great atmosphere and so on. I just don't see Roma winning this one. And watch out for a Napoli slip up at Empoli. Empoli is one of those opponents and you know coming off the international break, do you always have some upsets in there? This one I think is a prime candidate for upset, but hey, it may not happen as well. So those were my few thoughts on the Serie A round. On the first weekend of October, yeah, did not go my way all that way. But, you know, the season is still long. I'm much more optimistic than I was a month ago about Milan's prospects in this league. But you have to avoid such stupid defeats and you have to get your squad together. That's at least my opinion. I see frailties with Inter. I'm just afraid that Inter will figure it out. And I think that this Napoli train might be rolling. Not so afraid of you anymore, but we still have to wait until the next fixtures where these four teams meet. I think this is where it will be decided. And at the moment, I'm very much, very, very much missing Atalanta. And, you know, we also don't know what Lazio can do. Lazio? Watch out for Lazio. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.